Have you ever felt completely clueless on the wards, not knowing what to do with yourself and feeling more of a hindrance than anything else? If so, this video is for you. This is actually much harder than I thought. Hi everyone, you're new here because this is a new channel, so welcome. My name's Sarah, I'm a junior doctor working near London, and I'm so excited to be sharing videos providing insights from what it's like working as a junior doctor to getting through medical school and lots of other things. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to excel on a clinical placement. Have you ever felt completely clueless on the wards, not knowing what to do with yourself and feeling more of a hindrance than anything else? Or maybe you're in your preclinical years and the idea of working on the wards slightly terrifies you. If so, this video is for you. I'll be sharing with you everything that you need to know so that you're confident on the wards, make the most of your time and actually reap lots of benefits and knowledge from it. This is going to be a COVID edition in the sense that this adds a whole new dimension of challenging to medical students when they start on the wards. From social distancing to smaller ward rounds and general tension in the hospitals make it really difficult for medical students. So I'll be giving you some very specific advice to how you can get around these things and still make the most of it. So I've broken this video down into two sections. The first one is going to be about what you actually need to learn. I've timestamped stamped everything so that you can go back to each section as you will or skip the bits that you're not interested in. So this part includes the logistics and practicalities of being in a hospital, the theoretical of medicine you need to learn about, as well as the clinical medicine, and finally the art of medicine, which as you will see are very different things. The second section, which is the bulk of what we're going to be talking about, is going to be how to learn, and that's going to include the right mindset as well as practical tips. Let's talk about what you need to know. So one of the things that easily get overlooked is the logistics of a hospital. This is not something that you're taught in medical school, or at least in the preclinical years. This might seem like an obvious step to you, but a lot of medical students will just rock up to the wards with a maximum aim of learning how to clerk a patient and getting some teaching on the wards if they're lucky. And that's not all there is to it. One of the main things that really gets overlooked is learning about the logistics of being in hospital. That's all the things that nobody explains to you but expect you to know. Things like the daily schedule of the team, when is a ward round happening, what actually is a ward round, what are each person's role in the group of doctors that you see going around each ward to see every patient, what happens after that, what actually is a list of jobs, how do you generate them, what uniforms do the nurses have versus the healthcare assistants, occupational therapists or physiotherapists. All these things are so important because without these it's almost like you're playing a board game without having read the rules. It's very easy to tell when a medical student hasn't been on a placement budget because they don't know where things are, they don't know how things are run or who to ask for help. It's the simple things like knowing where the storeroom is so that you can actually go pick up the equipment that's needed to do a VBG. You need to know what the blueprint of the hospital is, specifically in the department that you're going to because it will change whether you're in a surgical rotation, a medical one or even within different surgical specialties. Another crucial thing that you'll be learning on the wards, yes, is theoretical medicine. It's the continuation of what you've been doing in medical school, so learning about different conditions, how to manage them, the different investigations you do, how to interpret the results that you have. As a medical student, this is the most familiar part of the whole learning process because it's what you've been doing in medical school. The third aspect that you need to be aiming to learn about is clinical medicine. So it's, this is different to the theoretical medicine in the sense that now you're actually seeing real signs on a person, you're palpating an abdomen and actually having symptoms. Do a neurological exam and put together all the signs that you're seeing. You'll quickly realize that patients don't fit into neat boxes and they don't match exactly what the textbook says. There's going to be outliers, there's going to be things that don't fit into the theoretical picture that you've been learning about all throughout medical school. And that's why you're learning in a hospital setting. And slowly you will learn to apply the theoretical knowledge into these clinical settings. Finally, you need to be aiming to learn about the art of medicine. And essentially all that is, is learning how to be a nice human being with patients. You will be surprised at how much this is overlooked. The best doctors that I have met are often not the ones that have the most theoretical knowledge, but they are the ones that have the absolute best patient manner. They are fantastic within a team and know how to talk to people. And that's a skill that's learnt and it needs to be something that you prioritise and try to develop on the wards. Now that we've talked about the things that you need to learn, let's talk about how to learn them. The first part of this is the mindset. This is a crucial part of the process. If you have the wrong approach and the wrong mindset, then it's likely that you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities because you don't recognise them as such. The first tip that I want to share, and it's something that I still use as a junior doctor, is don't ask for permission. It's not about being shy or being an extrovert 
a lot of the time as a medical student you're not really sure what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do and you'll often find yourself standing in a corner or hesitating to do something that you could actually 100% do and benefit from. So I'm talking about starting to document in the notes when you're with a senior who's seeing a patient or if you happen to be on the ward round and one of the doctors asks the nurses can we do a blood test. As a medical student you can 100% say actually I'll, I'll do it. The nurses will be so grateful, the doctors will be impressed and you will learn something. So it's really just a winner all round. I catch myself doing this all the time, even as a junior doctor. And I think it's, it's one of the things that you need to be aware of so that you can actively resist doing it. So of course, while you still need to make sure that you're safe and you don't do anything outside of your competence as a medical student, more often than not, it's usually something that you can get involved with and actually do. And I've found that in situations as a medical student and then also as a junior doctor, when I've just taken the initiative and done something without waiting for somebody to ask me to do something, it's been so beneficial for my learning. And people appreciate you more because it turns out you often do them favors along the way. The next tip that I want to give is about your attitude. This is so, 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 so important. I am very interested in things that take very little effort but have a massive impact. And this is one of those things. Coming in in the morning, on time, smiling, asking how people are and just being a friendly face on the wards will do absolute wonders for your learning and how much everyone appreciates you within the team. Simply being a nice person will make your experience in the workplace better, will make people appreciate you more and it just makes people want to approach you more and, and teach you things and give you opportunities in order to further your learning. The next tip is use your edge. As a medical student, you have the gift of time and that's something that you're going to slowly lose as you progress in your training because you'll be picking up more and more responsibilities. So use this time, whether you want to spend time with patients, doctors or any other healthcare professional on the wards. Spending a day with a nurse in charge is an absolute golden opportunity which any medical student can do. There are so many healthcare professionals on the wards with bags of knowledge that they'd be so willing to share if you just show some interest but you need to know that these opportunities are there so that you can seek them out. The final tip I want to give regarding mindset is to get your logbook done early. There are different approaches to this, but having tried leaving it to the last minute or trying to do it consistently throughout my placement, I found that the most efficient way actually for my learning was to get as much of it out of the way as soon as possible. That gave me the time I needed in the placement to be able to focus on the things that the logbook showed me I needed to work on. Now, I say this with a pinch of salt because the danger of this is once you get something signed off, you're not going to try and keep practicing it and getting better at it. And that's detrimental for your learning. So just because you've been signed off on something doesn't mean that you're competent. And remember, you're only as good as you train yourself to be. When you become a doctor, you're not going to magically know how to interpret an ECG or insert a catheter. There's a reason why there are competencies that you need to sign off as a medical student. You need to make sure that you're good at these skills. So I would say see your logbook as a checklist of things that you need to be good at but getting them done and signed off at the beginning is a good way to then focus on the work that needs to be done. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe to show some support and let me know in the comments down below what your experiences have been on clinical placements or if you have any further questions that you'd like to ask me. See you in the next video.